Hello, and welcome to the Make a Ball tutorial video. My name is Brian, and I'll be guiding you on our walkthrough of the tool today. To begin, we're going to choose Start Now from the top toolbar. After doing that, we're taken to the Choose a Sport section, where you can select between our seven different kinds of sports balls, as well as our accessories. In the accessories area, you will find our bases, cases, tees, and displays for showing off your custom Make a Ball. Today, I'm going to be designing a football, so that is what I'll click on. After doing so, I'm taken to the choose a size area where I can select between a full size regulation football or a medium 9 inch football. I'll choose a regulation size, so I'll click on that. And the last step before I'm taken to the tool is to decide between one panel of artwork or two panels of artwork. For the purpose of this tutorial, I'll choose two panels. So before we're taken to the tool, we get a pop up that gives us a brief overview of how the tool works. But since today I'm going to be walking you through how the tool works, we're just going to go ahead and skip this and we can do this two ways. We can choose let's get started from the bottom right hand corner or the X from the upper right hand corner. So let's get started. Upon entering the tool you're given a pop-up that lets you know the most important thing about the tool and that is to keep your photos and text inside the green line. Anything inside the green line is guaranteed to be printed on your sports ball. If it's outside the green line, we can't guarantee that it'll be on there. So again, make sure any important photos and text are inside the green line. So now that we're aware of that, we'll click the X and we'll move to step one. Step one consists of selecting a background for your ball. There are four options, a photographic background, a custom color background, a solid color background, or no background. A photographic background is a picture that has been formatted to fit perfectly on the sports ball. You can navigate through these by using the left and right arrows and then once you find a background you like, simply click on it and it will be automatically populated to fit your sports ball. But I don't want to design this so I can delete it two ways. I can select the X from the upper left hand corner or the X from my layers palette. So I'll click on the X and my background is deleted. The next option is a solid color background. Simply click on that button and you'll be given a color picker, picker to choose from. You can choose blue, pink, yellow, whatever color you want and it will automatically be filled on the background. But I'm not using any of those today so I'll just delete those out and I'll select custom color. Upon doing so I'm given a couple of different backgrounds to choose from. But I can select any background I want and change the color. So, say I choose this orange and black background. It looks nice, but those aren't the team colors that I used to play for. So, I'll change it. Simply come over to the left, and you see your black and orange colors here. So, I want my black to become yellow, so I'll select yellow. And then I'll select this orange swatch, and I'll change it to blue. After I've done that, I'll choose update colors. And just like that, I have a brand new custom color background for me. So now that I'm done with my background, I can navigate to step two, which is to upload images. And I can do this one of two ways. I can choose the number two, or I can use my navigation arrows at the top. So simply click on the nav arrow, and I'll be taken to the second step, which is to upload an image. Click the upload image button, and you'll be given a pop-up to navigate your computer to find the picture you want to use. So simply click browse and then choose the photo you want and then click upload. After a few seconds you'll get the image uploaded successfully message and you can exit this pop-up by clicking the X at the top. You can upload as many images as you want. So I'll click this X and I'll see over here where my images are. I've uploaded an image previously and I have another image that I plan on using today. So I'll click this photo and it automatically populates on my back on my design. But it looks like it's a little too big, so I'll shrink it down. Because remember, it has to be inside the green lines. One important thing to remember when dealing with photos in the design tool is that we restrict the proportions of your image. What this means is if you stretch the image really wide and it gets out of focus, we automatically snap it to keep it in focus. If this isn't a feature you'd like to have, simply go to the toolbar at the bottom where you can choose your rotate, width, and height options, and click this chain link right here. If you click it, you break the proportions of the image and you can now stretch it to any way you want. But, that's not how I want my image to be. 
So I can simply delete the image back out, bring in a new one, and it'll have the restrained proportions applied to it again. So I'll just shrink this down a little bit to keep it inside the green lines. I'll put it right in the middle of my ball. And now I'm going to apply a frame. A photo frame allows you to put a border around your image that just gives it a more polished and finished look. So I'll come over here to the left and select frames. And I'll be given an, a drop down as well as a selection palette. So navigate with your left and right arrows or choose the drop down. And I'll go to rectangle. And then I'm going to navigate until I can find a background that I'd like to use. I think I'll use this yellow one. And I'm going to show you the right way and the wrong way to use a background. The wrong way is to apply it too far past your image. So if I start out and drag my background or drag my border too far past the image, like so, and click apply, given an image with a bunch of black space. That's because when you apply your frame, it can only go around the image itself. Anything else that your frame is bordering will just be given a black space. So let's try this again. I can do this one of two ways. I can scroll to the bottom and use my undo button right here, or I can click the X and delete it. For the purpose of this tutorial, we'll go over the process again. I'll click the X and delete it out. I'll go back to my images, select the image I want, shrink it down, place it in the middle, choose my frames, and then I will apply it the correct way this time. So I have my frame where I want it. I simply choose apply. And now I have a nice finished frame around my picture. Anywhere I move my photo, the frame goes with it. The frame is now a part of the photo. So I'll bring it back to the middle. I'll blow it up a little bit. And I think that's going to be the only image I place on this panel. So I'm going to move on to step three, which is text. Again, I'll just click the three. And now I can enter my text. I'll put in seniors 2013. Your text is entered onto your design tool tool right in the middle. So I'm going to go ahead and drag it over to the left. The first thing I'm going to do is change the color by clicking this color swatch. And I'll change it to the yellow I selected earlier. I'm going to make it bold. You also have the ability to make it italic or underline, but I'm not going to use those. You can align it to the left, the center, or the right. So I think I'll choose center. You have two ways to orient your text. You can have it be horizontal, standard, or you can do vertical. Vertical doesn't really work for me in this instance though, so I'll go back to horizontal. You can add a glow or a shadow. I think I'll use a shadow, and then I'll change my font style to Black Ops 1, and I'll make my font a little bit bigger. So now that I've done that, I'll drag it into place. And then you also have a toolbar at the bottom that allows you to rotate your text. And you can do this two ways. You can click and drag, or you can use the left and right arrows to slowly move it into the correct, to the correct place. So I don't think I'm going to use any rotate right now. And we also have the curve option, where you can curve your text. So I'll put my text there. And I think that's the only text I'm going to use on this panel, so I'll navigate to step four. And here, you're going to enter your clip art. We have two types of clip art, standard clip art and custom clip art. Custom clip art is extremely similar to the way custom backgrounds work. You select your clip art. It's placed in the center of the tool. I'll move it to the right. And then over on the left, I can change the color of the clip art to match my scheme. So I'll select yellow, update colors, and in no time at all, I have a custom made clip art for me. So I'll drag this over a little bit and all looks good to me. So in the beginning I chose to design two panels of artwork and I just finished designing my first. To get to the second panel I'll go up to the left hand corner where it says choose a side to design. I'll select side two and I'll be taken to the second side of the football where I can begin the process again. So I can choose a background 
I can add my images, add my text, and insert my clip art. But after designing my first side, I don't think I want to design a, sec design a second side anymore. So I'll delete my background. I'll scroll to the top. And I'll choose the two sides drop down. When I do that, I can see there's one side and two sides. If I select one side, I get a pop-up asking me if I'm sure that I want to delete a panel. I'll select yes, and it will delete the second panel that I didn't design. Please be aware that when it deletes a panel, it always deletes the second side. You will always be left with the first panel. So I'll choose yes. As you can see, my design is repopulated, and I can see I'm now designing a one-sided football, and my price has been changed to reflect this. So, now that my football has been completed, I want to save it. So I'll go to the upper right-hand corner where there's help available, also a live chat, and I'll click save, and I'll choose save again. But before I'm able to finalize saving, I have to either log in or register. So I'll log in, I'll enter my email address, my password and I'll fill out the CAPTCHA and log in. After logging in I'm taken back to my design and I can verify that my design has been saved by going to the My Locker area where I can see my design but for now I'm just going to check out and I'll add the ball to my cart. So I'll simply click add to cart. So I'll see my cart. I can see I have a one panel football in there. There's one side for $50 and to the left I can choose between accessories a plastic display tee, an acrylic case, but for now I think I'm just going to check out and get my football. So I'll choose check out. And I'll be taken to the checkout page where I can enter any gift cards, promo, promo codes, I can enter my delivery and billing information as well as my credit card information. After doing all that I simply click review order where I can finalize my order and in a couple weeks I'll have my very own custom Makeable delivered to my door.